Welcome to Inspiration Rising. I'm your host, David Trotter, and we're here to inspire you to rise up in your life, love, and leadership. Now, many of us want to make changes in our lives, don't we? Perhaps you're feeling stuck in a job or a relationship, maybe even in your own body. Maybe you feel stuck in the city where you're living and you wish you could just find a way out. Well, our guest today is Camille Lorenta, and she was a lawyer in the Philippines working in a corporate context, but she wasn't feeling fulfilled. She didn't feel like she was maximizing her life. She wanted to do something different. She wanted to make a difference in the world. Now, some of you are listening and you may feel that way. Can you imagine going all the way through school, getting a law degree, passing the bar, getting a corporate job, and then feeling unhappy? Well, that would be the worst, and yet that's what she was experiencing. She wanted a change in her life, so she told her parents she was moving to New York City to study international and public affairs. She's now the co-founder and CEO of Human Group Media, a company that inspires people to do good through the power of audio storytelling. They partner with thought leaders, brands, and organizations to create riveting audio content. Camille is the creator, producer, and co-host of Sincerely Human, a narrative podcast featuring the vivid lives of people you should know and their stories of doing good in the modern age. She's also the co-producer of The Fix, a podcast hosted by leading global gender expert, Michelle King. Now, in most of our interviews on Inspiration Rising, we focus on a specific topic. But in this conversation, Camille is sharing more of her personal journey. My hope is that as you listen to her share about how she made decisions, you'll be inspired to make intentional, strategic decisions of your own. Now, by the way, if you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, it's free and easy. Open up the podcast app on your phone, either Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or Stitcher, and search for Inspiration Rising. Click subscribe, and you'll have access to all 70 previous episodes anytime you want to listen. All right, let's jump into my conversation with Camille Lorenta. Camille, thanks so much for taking some time to hang with me today. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks so much, David, for you know having me and, and for just the great podcast that you're doing. I want to learn about your experience growing up in the Philippines, especially when it comes to uh, the whole idea of what you wanted to be when you grow up. You know, I know in America, I was asked as a kid, all the time. You know, what do you want to be? What do you want to be? They actually wrote it down in a little book that kind of went along with you in the journey of life. So were you asked that question and and what did you what did you say? When I was asked probably when I was growing up, you know, in elementary, I was really good in math. So I thought that I would be a mathematician and coming from the Philippines, we grew up a tight-knit family where parents and perhaps even relatives would be involved in planning your future. And so if they see a particular talent or skill that you uh, as a child have this affinity towards or are good at, they would actually help you. Parents coming from, you know, more traditional families, it's really uh, sort of handholding, you know, your child or raising them in such a way that you are there with full support. So whether that's emotional or, you know, financial or psychological. So when they see that you are interested in something, whether that's the arts or whether that's math or, you know, the sciences, your parents would be, you know, the most supportive in terms of enrolling you in certain classes and just being proud of you Mm -hmm. essentially in what you're doing. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Fast forward, you went through a a whole lot of education to actually become a corporate lawyer. Mm -hmm. And um, you're in law, you're pursuing that path. At what point did you realize, okay, this particular career path just does not feel right? Yeah, so I would say it was not really a specific moment. It was just a series of events and reasons that sort of piled up for me, whether that was, you know, the insane hours or just really finding myself not passionate about what I was doing. I just didn't feel like I was doing anything meaningful, at least personally, or anything impactful that, you know, something that I could carry with me 
um, you know, even not as a profession, but, you know, as a person. Mm -hmm. And so I had really thought about it. I thought about it hard. It took me years to actually make that leap and decide that I wanted to leave it for good. That's a huge transition after you've gone through all the education, getting the job, you're in the role. Like, was there a moment, I mean, obviously you were processing it, you said for years, but was there a (laughs) moment where you were just like, yeah, I got to get out of it. This is killing me. Like, do you remember a moment like that? Or was it kind of just the the totality of all the experiences? I mean, it's it's both, I guess. But I do remember some moments when I was just ready to go. Um, it was just really, you know, finding myself working late nights and just doing something that I didn't really love and thinking, you know, if, you know, something happens to me tomorrow and this is the last thing I'm doing, like, mm. how will my life look like for other people or how will they see that? Like, have I helped anyone? Have I, um, you know, in a way that would be meaningful for me? So mm. I had those moments, uh, especially, you know, when the stress has really, you know, taken its toll, especially on, you know, your body and your mind and your health. Um, So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So many people um, experience that. I think you experienced it at a much younger age than, you know, a lot of people. I think that oftentimes happens in probably 30s and 40s, even 50s, where it's like, okay, I've been in this path for a while. Mm -hmm. I've got so much invested in this path. I feel bad about leaving it because of all that I've invested time, energy, money, education, so forth, Mm -hmm. but I'm miserable. And so it takes so much courage Mm-hmm. to transition out of that. So I just did, you know, I admire that courage. Thank you. You know, it really your- it really does. I mean, I I'm not the only person who's made such a huge career transition. I I I believe I've spoken to other people and you know, I I've, I've shared my story a few times too, I believe um in other you know, in other channels whether it's articles or or with other people and these stories resonate with just about anyone who found themselves, you know, who fa- who might have found themselves like burned out and just not having passion for what they were doing, you know, as a career. Yeah. It, you know, it happened to me actually 11 years ago. I don't know oh, how wow. much you know of my story, but I was a pastor for uh, 10 years, I had gone through a ton of education, got a couple of master's degrees and, and was a pastor for 10 years. And, um, you know, a lot of people, I was just talking to somebody yesterday and I said, yeah, you know, I, I left that 11 years ago. And they said, what? I, I, I didn't think you could do that. I thought you were stuck with that, you know, for the rest yeah. of your life. I go, yeah. Well, that's kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to leave is because I did feel stuck, you know, and yeah. I, was, I was burned out and I was not doing it for uh, what felt like the right reasons, reasons what I would hoped. And I wanted to do something else. Um, so I think so many of us go through, especially in this day and age, you know, the idea of being in a career for 50 years is gone. You might be in the same career, but company wise, you know, it's probably two, two years now, um, oftentimes. So um, you decided to move to the United States to further your education. Is, was that your next step? Yes. So I, it was a complete, um, new chapter for me. And by, by me deciding that I wanted to shift careers, I also wanted sort of a clean slate. And New York has always been an exciting city for me. I've sure. been here a couple of times. Yeah. Even before I moved for good. And it's just the energy and it's what sort of, it's that energy that tells you that you can be anything or do anything. And so when I was thinking of what I should do next or what I believe I'm destined to do for the rest of my life, I thought New York would be a terrific place to do that. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, of course, I had to tell my parents and tell my my family that, you know, um, this is something that I believe in my heart I should be doing. Culturally, this is almost unheard of, is it not? Um, or is it, or I, is it, I mean, this feels like a huge move for you. Yeah, it was a huge move. Like I had no f- 
family here. I, I, I went here by myself. Um, but I did have a few friends who were already living in the city, but no, you know, immediate relatives. Mm-hmm. And it was a huge move, um, leaving, you know, friends and family behind. But I mean, again, it's just a matter of supporting, you know, a loved one and hoping and praying that they would actually find a career and, you know, a profession or a calling even that would sustain them for the rest of their lives. And so that's how they took it. Um, It was hard, you know, uh, especially moving to a city like New York, there were a a lot of adjustments. um, But what I was really sort of excited about and I and again stars aligned and I feel like all the decisions I made thus far ha- are making sense or have made sense because I was looking at schools and I was looking at specific programs that would suit my interests and back when I was in college actually you know even before I decided to go to law school I majored in political science so that was my undergrad um major. And I was back then I had this vision of, you know, working at the UN and, and learning more about how institutions actually tackle global problems or social issues. And I kind of went back to that. When I was looking at programs, I, you know, I went to Columbia, I took my master's in media advocacy and communications, but it was actually an MA in international affairs, but my focus was in media and advocacy. And it was just really the perfect program for me because it was broad enough for me to understand and learn more about, you know, nonprofits and cost-driven initiatives and socially conscious brands, but at the same time, honing my communication skills. Because even when I was, yeah, even when I was a lawyer, I already loved writing. I loved that part of being a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which most people don't. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) So, uh, you know, as with any journey, we have different twists and turns, and you have been involved in all kinds of things, including... Um, actually working at the UN and being a contributor to the Huffington Post and all sorts of amazing Mm -hmm. things. And now you have started, what would you call it? Podcasting production company? Yeah. So we're a a podcasting company. We produce our own shows, but we also produce shows for brands, organizations, and thought leaders uh, to inspire social change. So that's essentially what we've built because this is really kind of the culmination of my life experiences and sure. also even, you know, my, my academic background and, and just all around my professional, you know, experience and, and my career choices thus far. And so while we do our own shows, so in particular, we have our flagship podcast called Sincerely Human, um, where we feature advocates, philanthropists, change makers, and, you know, compassionate humans who are making a positive impact in the world. Um, we make sure that, you know, it's a 15 to 20 minute episode where we take listeners on a journey and we tell them a specific story of kindness in action mm-hmm. from these inspiring humans that are just doing incredible things. And so that's one show that we do. And as a production company, what our mission is and what we aim to do is really tackle important conversations around social issues. So whether that's mental health or climate crisis or, you know, criminal justice reform, whatever it is that, you know, is important to tackle today And, you know, whether it's us talking to experts or telling stories from change makers and change agents, then that's essentially what our mission is at the company. Mm -hmm. So the name of your company is Human Group Media. Mm -hmm. And where did this term, and for those of you who haven't looked at the show notes yet, it's actually spelled H-U-E-M-A-N. Um, how did you come up with that name and what is the what is the backstory to it? Yeah, well, thanks for asking. Um, so it's interesting because the first iteration of our idea 
to make it easier for people to do good and find ways to do good is actually a social media app. And it was in 2016 during, you know, the elections here and coincidentally the elections in the Philippines. Um, And it was really a time when, you know, my husband and I were bombarded with, you know, negative messages and toxic messages whether, you know, it's us turning on the news or going on social media and we just couldn't escape it. And it kind of took a toll on us. But at the same time, we didn't want to go off grid. It wouldn't mm-hmm. be wise for us. We had, mm-hmm. we had our jobs and we had family back home and it was our, our way to communicate. And so we had this idea and we started developing that concept. Like where where should people go if they want to just hear about humans doing good in the world. Like, where are these stories amplified? Mm. Where sh- where should we hear about them? And especially in a world where, you know, it could be filled with hate or, you know, we could be um, cycling through those messages. Where do we find kindness, essentially? Mm-hmm. And so we spelled human with you know, the word you in it, which means color, because we wanted it to be vibrant. We wanted it to be joyful and also kind of the diversity layer because um, across our shows and even within Just Sincerely Human, our podcast, it's really telling the stories of the most diverse group of people Mm -hmm. from different backgrounds, but are all working towards making the world a better place. You know, a podcast is a perfect medium for us to tell these stories because I love storytelling. And I truly believe that in terms of getting people to learn about certain causes and certain issues, you have to tell them stories first. Mm -hmm. You have to connect with them on an emotional, human level. Before we continue our conversation, I want to invite you to join the Inspiration Rising Insiders private Facebook group. If you're looking for encouragement and support as you take your next step in life, join this inspiring group of women and a few guys like me who want to help you live into your greatness. Go to insporising.com slash insiders. That's insporising.com slash insiders. Answer a couple of questions and I'll invite you right in. Do you personally have a couple of issues that are really like, this is your issue? This is the thing you want to, I ask that because, you know, some people that I come across, they have that, that drive inside of them. Like, this is my thing. I'm passionate about this. For me, I I've made documentaries on multiple social justice issues, and I don't find that I have like one thing that I'm passionate about. You know, there's a lot of different areas. So do you personally, are you more diverse in your passion or do you have like a one or two hot button issues that you really want to see change happen in? You know what? I'm, I think, I think we're the same. I, I have, you know, diverse interests in terms of what we want to tackle next. And as, as we started building, you know, our company and, and doing more research and telling these stories, I really was able to educate myself on, on, on certain issues that, you know, I might not have been so well versed in. Um, so for example, right now I'm, I'm learning more about the climate crisis and just diving deeper into it and, you know, mental health, um, Actually, we just did an interview with Nancy Loblin at Crisis Text Line. So if, you know, for listeners who may not be familiar with who she is, she started Dress for Success and then Do Something and then Crisis Text Line. And it just really grew out of, you know, this one incident of um, a, uh, a texter, a random person who, you know, was having uh, uh, a real, you know, crisis. Um and then it spurred this movement of talking about mental health because why are we so open about our physical health and why are we so passionate about getting better at it, whether that's, you know, working out or, you know, um, eating healthier, but not really talking about mental health. And it's, you know, there's a stigma to it. And so there are these really 
complex issues that I have grown a lot of passion for, you know, over the years, I would mm-hmm. say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With each story you tell, yeah. like I, I was just listening to your podcast about the, the young child who had lost his, you know, didn't have uh, sight at, at birth. Mm, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, all of a sudden I'm like, Oh geez, I, you know, I, because that's not my experience. I don't know anything yep. about it. I don't have really that much compassion for it. It's not that, you know, if I hear the story, I'm compassionate, but once I hear his story, um, of not having sight and them developing the line of glasses, all of a sudden I have compassion because I heard the story, you know? So, yeah, it's, and it's hard to come across those stories too, right? It's like, we were all so busy. We all have, you know, different lives and different professions and careers. And so if you're not necessarily studying, for example, socially conscious brands or nonprofits, you're not in that world, I, I could see why it's not as accessible. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what we're really trying to do is, you know, engage the listeners by telling them this story. And, you know, at some point their experience, whether it's, you know, raising a child and, you know, having that fear of them being born, you know, without sight, that's, that's something that could happen to anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... That's that's what we're trying to do, you know, through the podcast. So a lot of podcasts, I would say the majority of podcasts, are started by individuals who have a passion for a particular topic or way of approaching the world or they want to share their own thoughts. But there are companies or organizations that are either starting or uh, sponsoring podcasts that... Some of it can be full on branded content, but it can mm-hmm. be so interesting that you want to listen. You know, it doesn't feel like an advertisement. Definitely. If there were, say, small to medium sized nonprofit, even a business um, that cares about social change, how would you coach them if they were listening now about how they could use the platform of a podcast in order to uh, amplify their message? How would you coach them on that? So I would definitely, definitely say that you should start with your personal journey. So if you founded your own nonprofit or company that is trying to change the world or is addressing a specific social issue, there must be a reason why you started that or what got you on that path. But if I mean, if you think that your your story isn't strong enough, which I believe, you know, um, you, you shouldn't feel that way. But if you think that there was um, an external reason, maybe you came across somebody or you met a friend or whatever it is, just start with a story. So it could be a team member, you know, who inspired you to start your own nonprofit or start your own business, right? Um, and if you still feel like there's a, a much, you know, stronger story that can resonate with your with your audience or, you know, whoever's listening to what you have to say, then maybe you can even tap your own community. How has their, how has your product or your service impacted their life? So there are many ways that you can go about it, but I would always start with your journey or your personal story. So you start, start with your personal story. The natural segue is featuring individuals who have been impacted by your work. Definitely. Because then you wouldn't really be selling your product or service or, or just kind of introducing what you're doing. You're already kind of giving this testimony of how your work has changed someone else's life. Um, and so I would, I would really advise, um, even, even not through podcasting, whether it's on your social media channels, uh, your website, because people like hearing an average person whose life is being changed, you know, or who has been changed through your work mm-hmm. because they feel like, oh, if that happened to that person, then, you know, what if I try this? What if I get involved? What if I engage in this mission? That could happen to me as well. So it's just really humanizing everything. Mm-hmm. 
humanizing everything. And boy, how easy it would be to interweave statistics, um, testimonials, uh, announcements about upcoming opportunities to get involved or serve. Um, yeah, just so many opportunities. Yeah. I would think because I'm, I'm very familiar with nonprofits, um, having started and worked in some, um, the, the biggest challenge that nonprofit executive directors have is thinking about uh, resources. Oh, this is going to take us more time, more mm-hmm. money, more effort. Um, I'll give you an example. Boy, talk about frustrating. Um, I like to talk about all the things that I've done in this life. That yeah, I'd been, love to that hear it. Worked. Let me tell you about something that didn't work. Um, <laughs> a couple of years ago, I had the idea of starting a, um, company organization, whatever that highlighted positive stories of nonprofits doing good work, examples mm-hmm. of their work, same, same thing that you're talking about, but not mm-hmm. in a podcast form, but in a short, uh, 30 to 60 second video clip, similar to what you would see online of telling a story. You've got the photos that are happening, the, the you know, the words that are popping up on the screen. Maybe, you yes. know, obviously there's music, all that kind of thing, a viral type piece of content. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I called it Project Great News and telling the great news of nonprofits that are doing work, you know, around the world. Offering the service for free to a nonprofit. All you have to do is tell me the story. Give me the story. Give me, um, if you can, at least three pictures. You know, we can use stock photography if we had to. If you had a video, whatever, I'll create the image. And I could not get the nonprofits to tell me the stories. I couldn't get them to tell them to me. Wow. Not because, not because they um, didn't have the stories. They all had tons of stories. Uh, not because they didn't even want to. It was a bandwidth issue. It was a, I was trying to sell something to them at, mm-hmm. at, for free mm-hmm. uh, that they weren't interested in buying. They didn't see the opportunity or the need because it felt like more work. I even would say, just call me. Just talk to me on the phone. I yeah. know I know these executive directors. These are people I know. I'm not cold calling people. Yeah. And um, one of the challenges for nonprofits is the lack of vision, I think, oftentimes for these new media channels. And maybe they got a bunch of boards, a bunch of hoops they got to go through. Mm-hmm. Um, but I ended up having to shutter the whole thing because, um, and I put probably six months into it, because uh, I just couldn't get the stories. And so I, man, I want to challenge nonprofit leaders and people that volunteer in nonprofits and who uh, give to nonprofits. Challenge your leaders to tell stories because that is so powerful. And podcasting, talk talk for a minute, um, Camille, about the potential hurdle of the production of podcasting. You know what I mean? How how easy could it be or how hard could it be for a nonprofit to get involved in something like this? I would say it could be easy, but it also could be hard. And the reason why I say that is it would depend on what your goals are. So I think the first step would be really um, conceptualize and also make sure that you have specific goals in mind, whether whether it's just a, uh, an internal communications tool, an engagement tool for your employees, or are you looking to really capture a broad audience? And so those are two separate things. So if you are just looking to make a podcast to have sort of this channel where you know you update your network about news, about updates, then I wouldn't say it's that difficult. Um, You know, there are resources out there that you can use for free, you know, in terms of creating your own show. But if you have a bigger vision and if you have, you know, this goal of connecting with uh, a large audience um, or or even listeners who might not have heard of what you're doing or, or something like that. And if that's your goal, then there's work a lot of work that would go into it because for us as an example in in terms of what we do we make sure that our podcasts are high quality and by high quality i mean we 
you know, we make sure that it's a well thought out story. It's compelling. And at the same time, the audio is good. There's scoring and there's, um, you know, uh, background music and effects and whatnot to make sure that we engage our listeners because that's key for us. And with that, I would say there has to be a dedicated team um, to work on a show of that caliber. So I guess it, you, if you have to sit down and evaluate what you want to do and why you want to do it, then it could go different ways. So it could be as easy as, you know, getting the equipment, um, uh, you know, studying how to record and how to conduct interviews and then just releasing it um, on a specific schedule, right? Um, and uploading it to certain channels or really um, planning it out and making sure that you're being, being very intentional with why you are starting the podcast. Mm-hmm. I think because of the accessibility of podcasting, that it's a great fit for any nonprofit that, like you said, you could do it as simple as getting a Zoom recording device and doing some recording of different stories and having an intern or uh, someone in your organization that's a volunteer do some basic editing. But a lot of nonprofits um, who are larger want to make the financial investment to tell those stories in a way that, that is really compelling. And the return on that investment is huge because of the opportunity to raise awareness of the issue and also increase um, financial development. So the opportunity, uh, the the ROI is definitely there. And also because if you're a nonprofit or, you know, um, you're sort of uh, in this business of uh, raising awareness around an issue or a cost, you're, you're in the hearts and minds business. So you have to really activate that. And the way to activate that is to tell a compelling story and make sure, you know, that a lot of, you know, effort and, and heart went into you sharing that story. Otherwise um, you might not you want. And so that's an investment, right? But when you do get them involved, when you do get them to listen to what your mission is, then that's a win. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you completely. So right now you've got two shows that you're producing, Sincerely Human and also The Fix with Michelle King. Can you describe Mm -hmm. that show real quick? And then also any other shows that you have planned for the near future? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for asking, David. Um, so the fix with Michelle King is uh, uh, essentially a show about gender equality. So we're tackling how men and women can build a more gender equal world. And so Michelle King, uh, she works at UN Women. She's head of innovation there, um, gender innovation, and she interviews entrepreneurs, business leaders, celebrities who are, you know, tackling this issue. And we, that's one, you know, podcast that we're, we're incredibly proud of. We've had guests like Abby Wambach, you know, Sophia Vergara, um, Ariana Huffington, um, just really amazing women and also men actually who are working you know, to to address this issue, whether it's in their own workplace or whether it's through their own businesses. And so that's what The Fix is all about. And we have uh, another podcast um, that we're looking to launch in the fall. It's called Finding Humanity. Um, so Finding Humanity is about telling true stories of survival and courage. And we are tapping and sharing the stories of the most resilient humans from all over the world. So while Sincerely Human, um, I would say we we share a lot of stories from here um, in the U.S., finding humanity is finding people from all over the world. So whether, you know, um, some of the stories that we'll be sharing on the show, um, a Nobel Peace Prize winner who um, survived and was you know, in the war zone in, in Uganda or 
whether they sur- their family survived the Cambodian genocide. So it's a lot of really compelling stories, but also educating people, you know, who are not familiar about what's going on in the world, but at the same time, inspiring them and, and, you know, sort of engaging them to be their own change agent. And one, I guess, one final thing that I wanted to share with, with this new show is that, you know, often we hear, um, we hear about change makers and, you know, it's, we see the results and we see, you know, the awards and the accolades and the recognition, but we don't get to really sit down and hear their story. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, the turmoil, the struggle that they had to go through, um, but at the same time, having survived such unspeakable injustice and really just hardship that you that you could never really imagine um, overcoming yourself, they have survived those, and yet they used those stories and their experience to actually impact their community. So, whether they're a refugee youth advocate or you know, a peace builder. So those are the types of stories that we wanted to share in Finding Humanity. Camille, you're changing the world. <laughs> I'm trying. It's, yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm, we really are. It's, it's really, uh, for us, it's, you know, when we started uh, the company and the mission, it was like, why why aren't more people telling stories of these amazing human beings? I get it. I, I ask the same question. I've pitched shows to production companies and networks about positive life-giving shows and, you know, people's stories. And, uh, you know, we live in a, a day and age where a lot of people like the, you know, watching people fight in some underground yeah. video, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. but, but for people like you and me, we're pushing against that current. And I believe that that in the depths of humanity, the greatest part of every single person, the the their highest self wants to be a part of something that is um, is rooted in love, that's rooted Definitely. in um, helping others, serving others. Um, we all have that amazing feeling when we do that. And so um, I think by telling stories, of life transformation, of generosity, of overcoming resilience. Um, you're doing it. You're putting it out into the world and it's, it's making a difference. So I, really, I love, yeah. And I love meeting people like you, David. And, and of course, you know, throughout my journey, building our company and growing our, our, our network and, you know, our shows, it's just actually me connecting with other people who are doing the same thing. And that makes me so happy and and really kind of blessed that I'm doing the work that I'm doing. Because I had I not been doing this, I would not meet, you know, a person like you, David, or, you know, hundreds of people that I've met in the course of, you know, the past couple of years who are just incredible people. You'd be still in an office writing documents. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's true. But I do still have... I, I still have friends, you know, who, who who are doing the same kind of work, but um, but they but they are, I believe, you know, proud of me. That's what they tell me because, you know, they they knew that it was, I guess, you know, part of you know my destiny to really change things and really even change my the own trajectory of my career for this. So there's definitely nothing wrong with being a corporate lawyer. I mean, it's, yeah, it's all good. It's not right, wrong, good, or bad. It's just that wasn't for you. And so you found your way. So it's great. Yeah. So we want to point people to uh, humangroupmedia.com, uh, H-U-E-M-A-N, groupmedia.com, or sincerelyhuman.com. We'll have all those links in the show notes. You can swipe up on your phone and check those out or go to our website, insporising.com, and we'll have all those social media links uh, for Camille and the shows and um, all that good stuff. So Camille, thank you so much for taking time to just share your story with us today. I really appreciate it. David, this has been fun and also really inspiring too for me because, you know, when you share your own journey, it's kind of a reflection and a moment to reflect on what you've done. And so I really, really treasure this time, you know, with you and, and 
you know, talking, being able to share this story with your listeners. To check out all the links to Camille and her work, swipe up on your phone to access our show notes or visit insporising.com. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on the podcast app where you're listening. Tell us about your experience on the podcast. It's one of the greatest gifts you can give us for all the free content that we put out into the world is to leave a simple review. I also want to encourage you to get a hold of the Inspiration Rising Manifesto. This is a printed physical card that I mail out to whoever requests one. I want you to be inspired by the powerful words on this manifesto, and you can read them at insporising.com slash manifesto. You can enter your name and address, and I'll mail a copy anywhere in the world. Go to insporising.com slash manifesto. Well, until next time, have a wonderful week.